Hello and welcome to Lent with St. Edith Stein. This is Rebecca and I am so glad you could join us today. This podcast is brought to you by St. Edith Stein Co. So please be sure to check out our website at stedithsteinco.com. This podcast is a series of short reflections based on the writings of St. Edith Stein. Just little nuggets of philosophy to help you on your way during Lent. So let's begin with a prayer that St. Edith wrote. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O my God, fill my soul with holy joy, courage, and strength to serve you. Enkindle your love in me, and then walk with me along the next stretch of road before me. I do not see very far ahead, but when I have arrived where the horizon now closes down, a new prospect will open before me, and I shall meet it with peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In her essay, The Separate Vocations of Man and Woman, St. Edith Stein wrote, Thus there has been a change in the relationship of human beings to the earth, to their descendants, and to one another. But all of this is the result of a changed relation to God. We don't know a lot about the original intent of Adam and Eve. The fall changed all of that. We can, however, see that they were intended to be partners. But then original sin caused a rift between mankind and God, and that affected all relationships. The earth was no longer ready and willing to supply Adam and Eve with food. Adam would have to fight the earth by the sweat of his brow, to survive. And Eve is no longer a pure helpmate. She and subsequent women will be subjugated to man. And we can tell by Adam's attempt to blame Eve for their sin that he will not be a good master. Just as the fall fundamentally changed the relationship between man and woman, the redemption began the long, slow process of healing that relationship Not only did our Savior come into the world via Mary, a woman, but Jesus also brought women into his inner circle. He made them a part of his public ministry. And furthermore, he declared that the decree of divorce was no longer acceptable and had been an accommodation for the hardness of the people's hearts. So now man can no longer cast women aside. St. Edith suggests that As we know that God is three in one, man and woman are two in one. While the Trinity doesn't suffer from imperfections, the strengths of woman make up for what is lacking in man, and the strengths of man make up for what is lacking in woman. So we are destined to live one life with each other as one joined being. And this is the redemptive order. Redemption restores the union of man and woman to something of its original intent. Man and woman become one flesh in union with each other. Now there's a considerable amount of controversy when discussing the call for wives to submit themselves to their husbands. Uh, For one thing, it's terribly out of sync with our modern sensibilities. But at the same time, there have been headstrong women ever since Eve. But a man is not without responsibilities in this post-redemptive relationship. A husband has the duty to imitate Christ and care for his wife with the sacrificial love that Christ has for the church. So in a true marital partnership where a husband seeks to be the hands and feet of Christ, a woman can submit freely and lovingly without fear of abuse. And when we follow the example of Mary, we can see the dignity in becoming a handmaid at all times. For me personally, marriage was a difficult transition. Before we were together, I had lived on my own for years. So I was responsible for working to bring in money. I paid the bills. I managed the finances. I cleaned the house. I repaired things when they were broken. Anything and everything was my responsibility. But when my husband came along, it was difficult to let him help out and take the lead on things that were better suited to his strengths. And I was headstrong at first, 
but I realized that I had to step back. It wasn't so that he could control me, but so that he could take care of me in the areas that he was strong in. And then I could redirect my energy to taking care of him in the areas that I was strong in. So based on a true partnership, marriage isn't 50-50. It's 100-100. That's the only way it works, according to God's plan. We both have to give ourselves entirely to the relationship, or rather, we have to both give ourselves entirely to God and understand that we are stewards of each other. Marriage is a sacrament intended to bear fruit through children, but it's also intended to help us on our way to heaven. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope that you'll continue to tune in as we reflect on the writings of St. Edith Stein throughout this Lenten season. May God bless you, and may the saints be with you.